good day. I'm Marjorie Gordon and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, July 19, 2023. Bilateral cooperation between Jamaica and Mexico has been strengthened with the signing of the final act of the 10th Permanent Binational Commission for both countries. The signing was witnessed by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Tuesday in Brussels, Belgium, as both countries participated in the third EU CELAC summit. Since its establishment in 1993, the Mexico-Jamaica Binational Commission has been instrumental in the strengthening of traditional friendship, trade, investment and cooperation opportunities for both countries. In April this year, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade virtually hosted the 10th meeting of the Permanent Binational Commission with Mexico. Both governments reiterated their continued interest in promoting initiatives to combat the illicit traffic in arms which fuels transnational organized crime and creates a public health issue. They also agreed on the importance of strengthening bilateral, regional and international cooperation in addressing this occurrence and reducing armed violence in their territories. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has signaled Jamaica's support for a renewed eu CELAC political partnership and the establishment of a permanent and structured mechanism for political engagement at the highest level between countries of both regions. The Prime Minister made his remarks in Brussels, Belgium on Tuesday during the plenary session of the third eu CELAC summit. The two-day summit between members of the European Union and the Community of Latin America and Caribbean states ended on Tuesday with a declaration containing wide-ranging agreements on major contemporary issues confronting both regions. The people of our countries are demanding meaningful, concrete and urgent action. As such, we must be resolved to approach our bioregional partnership with the pragmatism and ambition required to deliver on their behalf. Jamaica therefore looks forward to a deepened relationship between CELAC and Europe towards our mutual benefit. In the meantime, Mr. Holness welcomed the Global Gateway Investment Agenda for Latin America and the Caribbean, which was launched by the European Union on day one of the summit. The initiative is to bring over 45 billion euros of high-quality European investment to Latin America and the Caribbean, with more than 135 projects already in the pipeline. We look forward to the implementation of this investment agenda in Jamaica. We have, however, made significant efforts at debt reduction and are therefore hopeful that focus will be placed on de-risking investments, accessible interest rates and technology transfers. Several measures are in the pipeline to advance Jamaica's digital transformation journey and skills development. These were outlined by Minister with Oversight for Skills and Digital Transformation, Dr. Dana Morris-Dixon. She was speaking earlier today at the post-Cabinet press briefing. Among the initiatives to come on stream before the end of the year are the hiring of a Chief Information Officer, the establishment of NERA, and a Digital Transformation Advisory Council. The Registrar General's Department, RGD, will also be producing birth certificates in Braille. Now we talk about inclusion. Inclusion is not just a buzzword, it is real. When RGD does something like this, it shows that irrespective of who you are, we're going to respect you. And so we're going to be delivering certificates, work certificates in Braille. And this will be done by December, it's a target. Minister Morris Dixon says the RGD will also be installing self-serve kiosk and portals to limit in-person transactions. Another initiative to be undertaken by the Heart NSDA Trust is the rollout of the Learning and Investment for Transformation LIFT program. It will engage 500 young people over five years. We will be targeting students from 5th and 6th form who have graduated from 5th and 6th form across the country. Um, so that they can get employment and not only employment, they're going to be doing training before that in terms of the world of work. Minister Morris Dixon says the students will be placed in public and private sector organizations and given a stipend. 
Local government minister Desmond McKenzie has issued a stern warning that no other business should be conducted in the country's markets besides the sale of produce. He was speaking at a contract signing to rehabilitate the Hill 60 Road in Cheswick, St. Thomas, yesterday. Minister McKenzie expressed his dissatisfaction with what he described as the use of markets for other than what they were intended. Speaking specifically to the Yalas market, he said once the lease with the Paul Bogle Foundation expires in 2024, the market would return to the vendors. A new design is being prepared once the lease, ex the lease expires. I am expecting the Port the, the St. Thomas Municipal Corporation to do what is necessary so that the market can be returned to its original use. Mr. McKenzie had this to say for other markets with similar situations. On all the markets that finds itself in similar positions, there are two in Westmoreland, one in Little London and one in White House. The one in Trelawney, the lease has expired and the municipality has now taken back control of that market. And once those leases have expired, the ministry is going to move to ensure that the purpose that the market was built for is undertaken. And finally, the threat of industrial action from workers at the National Water Commission, NWC, has ended with the signing of a wage agreement between the entity and five unions representing the employees. The agreement comes after eight days of negotiations at the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Portfolio Minister Pernell Charles Jr. signed the agreement Tuesday afternoon. He thanked the parties, including the Ministry of Finance and Public Service, for engaging in the process which has resulted in an amicable resolution. Over 2,000 workers from the NWC were restive and served 72 hours of strike notice in response to concerns about the implementation of the compensation review. The main areas of concern included the conversion methodology and the treatment of traveling officers. On Tuesday, the Ministry of Finance announced that $1.7 billion has been allocated to the NWC to continue its wage compensation review. The provision is drawn from the contingency fund and made available in the second supplementary estimates for this financial year. It was also tabled in Parliament on Tuesday. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Marjorie Gordon. Thank you for watching.